Hello everyone, my name is Richard Cha, and today we'll be talking about UTI. Let's go into a question before we start. A 65-year-old woman without significant medical history presents to the emergency room with right flank pain, dysuria, increased urinary frequency, and fevers for the past three days. What's the best regimen to treat this patient with? We'll come back to this question at the end of the lecture, but keep this question in mind. Some different definitions. So when we talk about UTI, you think about lower, upper, uncomplicated, and complicated. Lower involves the urethra, the bladder. The upper involves the kidneys. Uncom uncomplicated means the patient is immunocompetent and no structural or neural disease. Complicated means mostly in men, patients who have structural or neural disease, who are pregnant, and who are immunosuppressed. We'll also talk about microbiology, what kind of bacteria causes the UTI. In complicated UTI, majority are E. coli, and then comes Proteus, Klebsiella, Staph, Saprophyticus. In, un in complicated UTI, we have E. coli, Enterococci, Staph, Epidermidis. In catheter-associated UTI, we have yeast, E. coli, enterococci, and staph epi. Some patients will have urethritis, and these are mostly caused by chlamydia, Neisseria gonorrhea, or HSV. Sometimes we come across patients with staph aureus. That's not common in the bladder, unless there's a catheter or recurrent instrument or recent instrumentation. Um, if patients do have you staph aureus in the bladder, it could be also seeded by bacteria in the blood. So what are some symptoms? Patients can present with dysuria, urinary urgency, frequency, hematuria, and suprapubic pain. In patients with urethritis, we have similar symptoms as UTI, but they can also have urethral discharge. In patients who you think about pyelonephritis, these patients have fevers, chills, flank pain, nausea, vomiting, and sometimes diarrhea. In terms of workup, we start with your analysis, urine culture, blood cultures, and if you're concerned for urethritis, we look for STDs. And in patients who you are concerned for abscess, you will get an abdominal CT with IV contrast. So these are patients that who you think have pilo and they fail to defarest after 48 to 72 hours and their clinical situation is not improving. Um, in if UTIs are recurring in men, you want to work that further. You would do renal ultrasound, abdominal CT, or cystography, and you also refer them to urology. In terms of treatment for the UTI, we treat them based on what type? Uncomplicated, complicated, if it's pyelonephritis, or renal abscess. And in patients who have asymptomatic UTI, we don't treat them, except if they're pregnant, if they're going for a urological procedure, or if they have renal transplant within three months. For uncomplicated UTI, the treatment is usually three days. But for, for nitroferritonin, it's 100 twice a day for five days, or Bactrim for three days, or Phosphomycin three grams one time. But some experts reserve this medication for multi drug resistant infections. In terms of complicated UTI, the treatment is usually seven days, and that's either with Cipro or Bactrim. If patients are pregnant, they're usually treated with cephalaxin for three days, augmentin for three days, or single dose phosphomycin. If you're suspicious for pyelonephritis, and if the patient's out in an outpatient setting, we give them a fluoroquinolone, Cipro for seven days, or Bactrim for ten or fourteen days, depending on how sick they are. If you if you're treating inpatient, we usually treat them with ceftriaxone or ampicillin sulfobacterum, or rarely with aminoglycoside for 10 or 14 days. Usually these are IV formulation. And we would transition them to PO when they're PO meaning oral, 
when they are clinically improved and does not have fevers for 48 hours. In terms of read, if, if you're concerned for renal abscess, then these patients will need to be drained. And the treatment for antibiotic regimen is the same as a pyelonephritis. Treatment for urethritis depends on if it's gonorrhea or chlamydia. Gonorrhea and hysteria, we treat them with ceftriaxone, 500 milligrams IM times one dose. If chlamydia infection has not been ruled out, then we also treat chlamydia as well. For chlamydia, we treat them with doxycycline 100 twice a day. In women who have more than two episodes of UTIs within one year, we can treat them prophylactically. They can be treated with a continuous regimen daily for six months and observe, or they can be given a one-time dose two hours before intercourse. And the different types of treatment is noted in the table as you can see. Let's go back to this question. A 65-year-old a 65-year-old woman without significant past medical history presents to the emergency room with right flank pain, dysuria, increased urinary frequency, and fevers for the past three days. What is the best regimen to treat this patient with? You can pause the video. The correct answer is IV ceftriaxone. Patients in the hospital are mostly treated with IV if they are sick enough. Amoxicillin, clovernic acid, and epicillin sobactam are pretty much the same medication in different formulation. And we don't need to treat this patient with anaerobic coverage. Nitroferritonin does not penetrate the kidney that well. So the best choice is IV ceftriaxone. Thank you everybody for listening. And if you thought this video was helpful, please click like, subscribe, and look out for my next video.